Welcome back. We're at the last stages of the rate of change topic. We are now going to be conducting our lab, which is going to be found on page 27 of the PDF. The link is here. Also keep in mind, this is slide seven of nine. I know I'm going to have to update those. So your access point is here, which I have loaded down there in a separate tab like you can too. And also here are the places where you're going to click to see your report pages. Don't worry about the cohort you're in, just click the period at which you are completing this. Also, if you're not sure what page you're on, if you see this little symbol, you're on the science lab. Your access points, that's the link that I also have on that page, gives you more detail as to what I'm looking for for each question. So here I have made sure to highlight for you that this line here is balloon A, the data for balloon A. You have a starting position and an ending position. Balloon B, you have a starting position and an ending position. Both of these graph lines are different for different reasons, but you'll be calculating the rate of change to see how it is different. You have time on your x-axis in minutes. You have height in, me in meters on your y-axis. So you have your units for your field value and your time. Here you have the questions. I have my notes given to you to give you some accessibility since some of you are not here right in front of me to ask me questions. And even those of you that are here in front of me, you can check this first before checking in with myself, Ms. H or Ms. Kowalski. So here I want you to understand that for question two and three, you're just calculating the height differences. For four, five, seven, Eight, you are actually calculating rates of change. What's important is that I've told you rate of increase is rate of change. I'm telling you from this here, it might be difficult to understand what the time frame is and making sure you understand balloon A. All right, so keep in mind what data you're using for balloon A, balloon B, balloon A, balloon B, okay, respectively. You'll then have some information that you'll want to be able to explain based on that data or based on how the graph looks. Okay. Down here, as I mentioned, you'll be using the data from previous questions to explain these things here. I am not asking you to sketch this. You can explain it, but you do not need to sketch it. One thing I'm going to point out for this particular graph is that when you have a deeper rate of change or a steeper slope for your calculation, you're usually referring to something that is moving very fast, rapidly increasing or rapidly decreasing. The flatter something is, the less change you have in field value. So slow or no change, you tend to see flat. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're answering this. The place for you to do your recording is going to be here. Depending on what class period you are, make sure you click the right link that will take you to the assignment page for you to then choose the assignment you're working on, which is this lab report. Rate of change, the lab's actual name is Graph Analysis Lab, and it's your report page. So you have your place to give me a definition. You will have a place for you to do your work, showing some calculations with units. Yes, I am expecting you to Fill in, if you have to, put maybe your top half of the formula in parentheses and then use a slash symbol and your time in parentheses to show me some of your work before your final answer with units, okay? Slash symbols tend to help you best representing division and also slash helps you with your unit to show the per amount, okay? For discussion questions, there are three discussion questions down in this section here, your question and your answers. If you have a question and you're in the room, I would like you to focus on your access points first, your notes, your annotations, calculations, your independent practice. Then you can check in with maybe a neighbor at a distance. And then if you really need to, you can check in with Ms. H, Ms. Kowalski, or I, and we can help you out. For those of you that might be from a distance remotely right now, maybe trying to send me a Jupyter message or send me an email or contact me in classroom and 
potentially in Zoom, I'm not sure how difficult it's gonna be yet because I'm recording these before school starts. We'll find out, we'll work on it, and I'll continue to adapt that as we move for you to communicate with me if you're struggling on these things too. But the good old fashioned way is still there. All right, other than that, good luck. I'll see you on the next one.